Gene Deitch is Tom and Jerry, right? <laughs> yes, yes, I know these cartoons are more terrible than armpit <laughs> rashes, but these cartoons have an interesting backstory and I wanted to talk about it, along with ranking and reviewing all 13 cartoons. But why am I doing this? Because I have way too much time on my disgusting palms and monkey fingers and have nothing else to do. Let's get this f***ing dumb sh started, shall we? I used to watch Boomerang a lot when I was younger, so I watched every Tom and Jerry short over and over all day, every day, and the next day, and the- okay, I think you get the joke. But these Gene Deitch cartoons are the ones I'd want to watch on any given day. I infer that younger me would personally prefer these to any other Tom and Jerry cartoons because of the surrealist feel for some inconsplicable reason. Maybe I was drawn to them because of how strange they are. Everything was weird and didn't feel like the Hanna-Barbera Tom and Jerry shorts. The animation, the sound design, the music, and the art. I'm not sure why I'd rather watch mean-spirited cruel animal abuse than mostly deserved and funny animal abuse when I was younger but that is what I infer about younger me I would beat the f out of younger me if time travel existed In 1957, Metro Godwin Mayer decided to close their animation studio, MGM Cartoons, due to low budgets, rapidly losing money, and sales being better when they re-released old cartoons in theaters compared to the new Cinemascope shorts. Effectively cancelling Tom and Jerry and having Joseph Barbera fire everyone at the studio, which he recalled as terrifying. Big f***ing mistake! We won't be discussing this, but if you want to watch Hanna-Barbera's legacy, watch Saber Spark's video on Hanna-Barbera. It's a good video, I recommend. And also watch Dave Lee Down Under's Flintstones evolution video to see what they've accomplished with one property. It puts into perspective how important Hanna-Barbera and both William Hanna and Joseph Barbera was to the... I, I forgot the word. It's to animation on television, you f now back to this sh Joseph Vogel of Metro Godwin Mayer hired the late Oscar winning Czech's American animator Gene Deitch to take over the reins of Tom and Jerry in 1961 despite Deitch's negative feelings toward Tom and Jerry. In fact, Gene Deitch would call the series tasteless and a primary bad example of senseless violence. Gene Deitch was fresh off an Academy Award and running his own studio when he was making films in Prague, Czech Slovakia with animators and artists who knew nothing about Tom and Jerry or American animation. Over the next year, the late Gene Deitch and his team of animators produced 13 sh shows that are not good for theaters. Theaters. These cartoons were in theaters. What the f <laughs> Even though Gene Deitch first disliked Tom and Jerry, he eventually came to appreciate their inventiveness and respect their craftsmanship. The designs were kept as similar as he could, using the late Hanna-Barbera Tom and Jerry's as a reference. And Tom and Jerry's intense anarchic nature was maintained. He learned to view the violence as a parody of exaggerated human emotion, as well as the fun and mayhem, and embraced the biblical nature of the David and Goliath-esque shorts. He also had enough pride in his work to keep Tom and Jerry as familiar as possible and do the best they could. Because of Deitch's animators being completely unfamiliar to Tom and Jerry, Deitch found this an... Deitch found this... Ugh... Deitch found this an almost impossible task. Due to his team's lack of creativity, he was forced to write and perform the majority of the key animation alone. He took this action to maintain the American Tom and Jerry style. <laughs>
I know what you're asking. Yes, just pretend, just roll with it. Why was Daichi's team so unfamiliar and creatively isolated? The animation was outsourced to the communist-run Iron Curtain nation of Czechoslovakia. Their access to Western entertainment was little to non-existent. As a result, none of them have ever heard or have seen Tom and Jerry. They were unaware of the movements, the manner, and pretty much every other aspect of Tom and Jerry that made them Tom and Jerry. Daichi had to impart the fundamentals of Western animation to his animators. The Czechs saw animation in a very poetic and structured way. They didn't try for realism. They didn't believe in lip sync, which shows especially in Dickie Mo. Uh, Dickie Mo. <laughs> Dickie Mo. And they didn't believe in showing everything. Shoveling it to them was a common phrase for Czech's animation. It leaves nothing to the audience's imagination. Czechoslovakian company Rebrandt Films produced the animation. How about the quality? Just no! This strange and subpar animation is a significant step backwards from the Hanna-Barbera era. The color palette is bland and unpleasant to the eye. But that is also because these cartoons were color processed in Metro Color 16mm films. The movements of the characters were choppy and odd to behold. What? Another reason why the animation looks bad is because they only had $10,000 to work with to make 13 cartoons. For animation, that's not a lot of money. Compared to MGM, these films were given a lot more creative latitude. The soundtrack included a full symphony orchestra, while the backgrounds included excellent, very detailed, surreal-looking paintings. In order to cover up their shortcomings, they played a love de plata. You not a different breed, you just different. You're weird, goofball. In order to cover up their shortcomings, they put a lot of emphasis on the music and ambience. Doesn't make them good cartoons though. Gene Deitch brought some novel ideas to the franchise that have not previously been explored. For example, most of the shorts no longer take place near a house and instead employ other themes. For example, Switching Kitten takes place in a castle. It's Greek to meow! Takes place in Asian Greece. Mouse into Space is what it says. Sorry Sapphire takes place in a jungle. And Tom the Trap takes place in an old- And Tall in the Trap takes place in the old Cowboy West, which would continue into the Chuck Jones era, as well as the other reboots, movies, and or spinoffs. <laughs> The sound design is strange and feels like a mind cluster f Twitter user Zachary Vega made a two minute compilation on Twitter playing clips of these sound effects. I will play the video now. Twitter user AJD1667 puts it best. This is just a mess of noise. There's times where the sound effect doesn't match with the animation or missing it entirely. You know what really sucks me dry? 
Wow, the music is nice. It's not Scott Bradley levels of fantastic, but it does what it needs to do. Be insane and sound good, but there's some times where it's not. Like, what the hell is that? It sounds worse than fork scraping. There's also moments where the music tries to be the sound effect and it sucks. The voice acting sucks harder than listening to your own voice. It sounds so forced and corny. It's my gun! Give it to me! Don't touch my gun! There's a lot of moments where the sounds and voice acting are heavily echoed and reverbed. <laughs> There is no explanation for this odd sound design. It just sucks. The characters are abysmal. My little brother is more appealing than these unappealing condom drinking characters. And that is a bad thing. Like a bad, bad thing. In Switching Kitten, the scientist has the head of a f***ing dildo and the chin of a pot holder. His personality is just the insane scientist guy. In Landing Stripling, there is a yellow bird that has the worst sound I've ever heard from a Tom and Jerry cartoon who helps Jerry beat up Tom. <laughs> But it's rightfully deserved because Tom was excessively cruel to the bird for a minor inconvenience. But I don't know about bullying him alive, though. <laughs> and Kelly spoke cat. Cal Kelly spoke cat. There is this female cat whose only purpose is to be attractive to Tom in zoo files and just be a plot device. Zoophilia is often very misunderstood. There's also this orange cat who's cool as fuck and plays a big drum. He turns Tom into a turtle. <laughs> w character for real for real. In Dickie Mo, there is this lunatic captain who is obsessed with catching a whale named Dickie Mo. He kidnaps Tom and forces him to work for him because the other sailors value existence. <laughs> In Tom the Trap, Sheriff Mutt Dillon looks awful. Gene is just... He's just Gene. In Carmen, GET IT! The conductor is an old sack of rotting skin who gets excessively pissed at Tom. Jerry has morphed from a troublesome and cunning, but very lovable funny and cute mouse into a malicious sadistic jerk who tortures Tom at the slightest provocation for no reason at all and in a way that appears to be more serious attacks than just tricking or teasing him unlike in the classic and chuck jones era where tom would occasionally win or put aside their differences or even where jerry would get his comeuppance for provoking tom jerry almost always wins in the end he became a complete f***ing karma houndini who never gets what he deserves similarly similarly similar similar similarly similarly Tom has been vilified, as he is now an even bigger punching bag than he was before. Also, he appears to be much weaker, more cowardly, and frail than usual, which is most notable in the three cartoons featuring his infamous and notorious owner. Speaking of the owner, let's talk about this overweight regurgitated stomach acid that is this character. <laughs> Tom's first owner in these cartoons is this f named Clint Clobber. His whole personality is committing torture, animal cruelty, and abuse to Tom for an inconvenience or slight wrongdoing. I f***ing despise him. Always did, always will. <laughs> The intro music cuts out. I guess that's cool. A scientist who's gone absolutely mental in Jerry changes the mentality of Chinese food for the opposite animal. Tom has to deal with lightning with the dog mentality as he fails to capture Jerry. It's boring. It's creative at some points like Tom going through the glass and Jerry being the lion emblem. But that's it. 3 out of 10. Week short. <laughs> Why are you walking like this?
Tom and the smelly oh! rectum f goes fishing, but Jerry gets in the way. This one sucks harder than getting stick drift. It's horrible. It's just Tom getting maliciously abused by this fat, wet crotch knob for seven minutes. You're a cracker, piece of shit, bun, piece of garbage. <laughs> My man's is crying. Who finds this amusing? I fu <laughs> one out of ten, disgraceful short. <laughs> Tom and Jerry button in ancient Greece. It's fine. There are a lot of neat visuals and visual gags, like Jerry's hole growing on Tom's head, Tom scratching art on a pole, Tom launching himself like a cannon, Tom boxing with vases on, you get it. I wish they took a- I wish they took advantage of this concept more, but for what it is, it, it the, what the f am I reading? But for what it is, it works, and it suffices. 6 out of 10, above average. Oh, brother. Tom and this Caucasian overweight snow beast have a barbecue night, but Jerry gets in the way. It's even worse than down and outing because Tom's abuse is worse than it is in down and outing. Like Tom being forced to drink a bottle of cola, another off-screen massacre, Tell getting roasted in a grill, almost drowning, getting his head sandwiched and burned, etc. The humor in these are so bad. It went from well-timed slapstick to cruel one-sided animal abuse. Yeah. One out of ten, horrendous short. <laughs> It's self-explanatory. This short is fun. I like the idea of Tom not wanting Jerry to leave and the consequences of Jerry leaving him. He even gives Jerry opportunities to shoot him in the head, smash his head, and even explode him. I wish they took more advantage of them being in space besides Tom finding himself there and messing with Jerry and asteroids. Nice visual gag at the end. Jerry's scenes are uninteresting though. 6 out of 10. It's fine. <laughs> It's literally just Tom and Jerry. Five. Tom and Jerry are on a ship until Tom falls in love and tries to be with her. It's boringly predictable. Tom tries to do something, Jerry does something to damage the situation. Rinse and repeat for a couple times. They later introduce an orange drum playing cat, but he's only there for a minute and just beats up Tom and turns him into a turtle. <gasps> Two out of ten, week short. This butterface prick sh captain who is obsessed with catching Dickie Mo, a sea whale, kidnaps Tom and enslaves him on his ship despite him doing nothing wrong and predictably, Jerry f**ks with them. It's humorless and in the cards. Tom and Jerry has always been foreseeable, but they always get it right and make it funny. These shorts are more surefire than George Bush on September 11th and are not funny. You can see everything coming from a mile away than the January 6th United States Capitol attack. It makes a very unpleasant viewing experience. <laughs> 3 out of 10. Not as weak as the other weak shorts, but still weak. This is just great Tom and Jerry. This short is supposed to be an advertisement for a Tom and Jerry cartoon kit. I love the things that they do here. Like Tom and Jerry dancing to watermelon seed rattling accompanied by music. Tom becoming a cannon. Jerry being a black ribbon karate master after reading judo for mice. Tom being a professional boxer and later a karate master. How fastly the karate chopping competition escalates, you get it. Also, the backgrounds are all flat colors except for Tom running in his quick training montage making this easy me material. It doesn't play into the ranking, but it's something to point out. 10 out of 10, fantastic short, the best one on the list. Sheriff Dunbillon hires Tom to get rid of Jerry because Jerry has been robbing Gene of his cheese. They really don't take advantage of them being in cowboys land. This short would have been 10 times better if they took advantage of them being cowboys. But it is what it is. The short's 60 years old, I bet they're not gonna do anything to it now. <laughs> 4 out of 10 
4 out of 10, below average. <laughs> Tom and this obese taint pirate go hunting on this shitty looking elephant and Jerry f with Tom. It's thankfully the last animal cruelty episode and the last appearance of this idiotic douche f Clint Clobber. And thankfully he gets what he deserves, mauled by a lion and taking away hide on a stick. But besides that, this short is void of comedy and dull. Uh, do. Two out of ten, solely because of Clint getting what he deserves. If it wasn't for the ending, this short would have been a one out of ten. Jerry saves Tom's life after being unconscious outside frozen, and they get to act normal. Remember, they're actually friends. Tom betrays Jerry and gets what he deserves. This is a great short. We finally get to see Tom and Jerry not be dicks and just hang out. They also get drunk. I love Tom's stupid ass laugh provided by Alan Swift. <laughs> Tom actually get what he deserved in this episode because he unfairly betrays Jerry by throwing him outside of for his own benefit. I like the sequence of Jerry rightfully messing with Tom because of his perfidy. 9 out of 10, great short. <laughs> Tom fixes his way into an orchestra to catch Jerry. I like when a bunch of ants mess with the music chart and it changes the song. Nothing to say really, 5 out of 10 average. <laughs> the final rankings are from worst to best. High stakes, down and outing, sorry safari, callous cat. Dicky Moe, Switching Kitten, Tall on the Trap, Landing Stripling, Carmen Get It, Mouse into Space, is great to me. Ow! Buddy Sticker in the Water, and the Tom and Jerry Cartoon Kit. And that's every single Tom and Jerry Gene Deitch cartoon ranked. That sucked. There is a reason why these are called some of the worst Tom and Jerry cartoons ever. It's just Tom getting viciously abused for 13 shorts and Jerry always winning. <laughs> These cartoons were commercially successful and they dethroned Looney Tunes in the 1960s. But these shorts were heavily panned for everything. Deitch recalled receiving a death threat from a disgruntled fan who suggested he died for his work. Sounds like a certain platform these days. After Carmen GET IT! MGM ended their contract with the late Gene Deitch and rebrand films as they were just getting the hang of their characters. But why though? MGM was scared of the communist nature of Czechoslovakia. The rights to make cartoons were later given to the late Chuck Jones, a famous Looney Tunes director and animator who produced 34 Tom and Jerry shorts in America between 1963 and 1967. What became of Gene Deitch after that? From 1968 to 2006, he worked as a children's novel illustrator for Western Woods slash Scholastic. <laughs> From 2011 to 2020, he also maintained an online blog. He later developed intestinal problems and died in 2020 at the age of 95 years old. That concludes our look at Gene Deitch's Tom and Jerry. I know this has been done before, but I've always wanted to give my take on the subject. You can subscribe and follow my platforms listed in the description, as well as join my Discord server. I'll see y'all again soon. Bye.